I'm excited for today's video because we are gonna put this engine back together for the Beater WRX. So what is up you guys and welcome back to the channel. I've been waiting to make this video for a while because we've been waiting on parts and I'm still waiting on valve cover gaskets and spark plug tube seals, but we got pretty much everything else to put this engine together. The heads are back from the machine shop. We got our new to me timing covers from Micah in the last video. Definitely gotta clean those up. And we got a new Gates timing belt, Subaru OEM engine gasket kit that comes with some fresh new head gaskets. We got two new drive belts. So first things first on the engine, these pistons are pretty carboned up and we gotta get the surface of the engine block cleaned up. So we got a nice clean surface to set some fresh new head gaskets on and hopefully this thing runs when we get it back together. even know where I left off in this video. I'm kind of jumping back into this after I got the coilovers installed on the WRX, which if you guys did not see that video, I will put a link up top to that. She slammed right to the ground in the back and the front honestly has a good ride height right now. But once we put this engine in, it should sag it out a little bit more and then we could dial in the ride height after that. But I'm pretty sure in the last clip that you guys just saw, I was getting the pistons and everything like that cleaned up and we got them pretty clean, but I'm still not happy with the surface that the head gasket's going to be meeting up to. So I'm going to take some scotch bright and clean that up a little bit more. We're gonna clean the coolant passages out with some brake clean, spray it all out with compressed air to make sure we got no debris or anything like that inside of the coolant passages or the oil galleys. And I always leave the drain plug out in the drain pan while I'm doing this just to make sure that any of the brake clean that gets in there actually drains out of the oil pan. And another thing I wanted to mention real quick before we get into a time lapse of putting those heads back on the engine, my valve actually isn't cracked. I'm just an idiot. I totally thought it was cracked. After I went and bought a new valve, I went to the machine shop and showed them it and he looked at it and went, oh, I don't think that's cracked. So we took a knife and scraped all the carbon buildup off the valve in the spot where I thought the crack was. And it turns out that he was right and I'm an idiot and it's not cracked. So that is right down to the bare metal of the valve right there. And there's no cracks whatsoever. So the good news there is that now I don't have to replace the bucket there and measure valve lash or anything like that. And we can just slap the heads back together, put all the buckets back in the same spot as they were before and she will be good to go. The bad news about that is I wasted 36 bucks on a valve. But whatever, I'll just keep it here because I can't return it. Just in case one day I buy a WRX that does need an intake valve, which is pretty rare because usually you burn exhaust valves. All right, so we got everything cleaned up. I went through with some brake clean and a clean rag and rewiped the surface down. Took some Lucas Oil assembly lube and just put some assembly lube on the inside of the cylinders just so that you're not dry firing those piston rings on your initial start. Now we're gonna take our brand new head gasket, get her set into place. Mint. Now we're gonna get all of our head bolts installed. You should be installing new head bolts every single time that you take the heads off and take the bolts out, but I'm gonna be reusing the old ones and we'll see what happens. I think it'll be fine. The bolts don't look stretched or anything like that. And I didn't wanna spend 250 bucks on head bolts. So what we're gonna do with these head bolts is just put a little bit of oil on the threads of them before you install them so they're not just getting threaded in bone dry. And then once they're oiled up, you can get each one set into place. Then you're gonna start threading them all by hand. Now that we got them all snugged up, we are gonna get the heads torqued. So first step in this torquing procedure is gonna be 22 foot pounds. And you're gonna start with this top bolt here, second bolt will be this bottom middle bolt, then top left, then bottom right, then bottom left, then top right. As you can see, I got my torque wrench set at 22 foot pounds. It says if you hear any creaking or the bolt kind of binds up when it's going in, you're supposed to restart from the beginning. Oil the threads more and keep going. I got a little bit of creaking out of this top left one, but we'll see what happens on the next step. Next step is gonna be 51 foot pounds. Yeah, you guys can see it there, it started to bind up. So when they bind up like that, you're not getting a proper torque. I'm just gonna keep oiling the threads up, put them back in, see if it creaks a second time. But this time, I'm gonna use a little bit of assembly lube. It's a little bit thicker, might stick to the threads a little bit better. All right, attempt number two.
All right, first torque procedure at 22 foot pounds, no binding whatsoever. Now let's see what happens at 51. And that one binded up again. So we got two bolts that are binding every time, this guy and this guy. Now I gotta get them all backed out again, put some more assembly lube on them, and try this again. Let's just time lapse through those two steps that we just did until I can get them to not bind anymore. All right, I finally got them all to torque up without binding like they were before. Next step in this torquing procedure is to back each bolt off by 180 degrees in the same alphabetical order. Then once you back them off by 180 degrees, you're gonna back them off by 180 degrees again. So you don't really need a torque wrench that has angle torquing on it to do this. Basically just setting your breaker bar like this, then you're gonna rotate 180 degrees until you're on the other side. from one side all the way around to the other, which is 180. And we're gonna do this last one 180 degrees. I think that this step is just to make sure that they're all completely loose. And that first step was basically just to seat the heads against the head gasket. So now doing this, you should have all your head bolts completely loose. There's 180 degrees twice in the full sequence. Now the next step in this torquing procedure is we're gonna tighten bolts A and B to 25 foot pounds. We're gonna tighten C, D, E, and F to 11 foot pounds. Now that we got the middle two to 25 foot pounds and all the outside bolts to 11 foot pounds, we're gonna tighten all the bolts by 90 degrees again. So essentially you should be starting straight down and it should go 90 degrees, which would be facing me because I'm standing on this side of the engine. Now that we've got all of those tightened by 90 degrees, we're gonna tighten them by another 90 degrees. All it says in the instructions is that you ensure that throughout these last two steps, you do not exceed over 180 degrees with each bolt. So 90 plus 90 is gonna be 180. All right, and once you tighten them all down by 90 foot pounds a second time, we are done. So let's time lapse through, cleaning up the other side of the block with a scotch bright pad, moving up the head bolts, that whole nine yards that we just did. There we go, boys. She's starting to look like a Subaru engine again. This side, I didn't have any issues with the bolts creaking or binding up or anything. They all torqued up first try, no problem. I used assembly lube on them right away and it was perfect. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is get all of the buckets installed and get my cams installed. So I got both the intake and exhaust cam installed on the head. All the buckets are in, everything's all lubed up nice. And we got four of the cam caps on. Again, when you're installing the cam caps, make sure you don't forget where they go and make sure when you put them on that the arrow is pointing towards the front of the engine. So now that I got those four caps on, all the bolts are loose on them, I gotta get the front caps installed. So we got some Permatex black sealant. All you're gonna do is put the sealant around the bolt holes on each side and just put a good line across the whole mating surface of the cap. All right, just like that, I got all my silicone on my cap. Oh, what the hell am I doing? I put that on fucking backwards. What is wrong with me? Yeah, I'm an idiot. Wow, is it ever a good thing that that just happened because I was thinking right side of the engine, I put everything on the right side of my table, but my table was backwards. So I put all the wrong buckets and the wrong cams in the wrong head. So now I gotta get all this pulled out and flip it over to the other side. But the reason I caught myself is because that cam sensor goes to the top of this front cam cap. And when I put it on, all the silicone was back here and I'm like, wait a minute, that sensor needs to be on the top. So yeah, whoops. Good thing I caught that. Not afraid to admit I made a little bit of a mistake there, but at least I caught it before we put the engine together. We 
We finally got all the cams in the right spots this time. When you guys are torquing these on an EJ205, which is what this engine is, you're gonna put the silicone on these front caps, tighten all the caps up by just snugging them up to start to make sure they're all nice and evenly tightened. Then the torquing procedure is A, B, C, D, E, F. What you're gonna do is torque these front two to 7.2 foot pounds, and then all of these rear bolts are gonna be 14 and a half foot pounds. Make sure you can grab your cams and spin them by hand. And on both of mine, I can grab them and spin them by hand. That means my valve lash is good physically on those two cams. I didn't check them and measure them or anything, but this engine was running before, super, super quiet, and I put all the buckets back in the same spot, so we should be good to go. Now the next thing I wanna do is completely seal this engine up. So we're gonna get the valve covers put on, but before we do that, I gotta get these valve covers cleaned up. I already pulled all the gaskets off the bolts for the valve covers. So let's take both of these valve covers over to the Varsol tank and get them cleaned up. While I was cleaning the valve covers, I felt like it was a good time to just clean all my timing covers that I got as well, because they were caked in oil. So we got both valve covers cleaned up and all the timing covers are nice and clean now, no more oil all over them. So I picked up a full OEM gasket kit from Subaru and I actually got the kit from a company called Subi Supply Co. They carry pretty much any part you can imagine for Subarus. So if you guys want to save a little bit of money on their site, just to help you guys out, use Daniel5 for 5% off your order. You guys can order anything from coilovers, OEM engine gasket, it sets like this. You can order gauges, you can order turbos, you can order literally anything you can imagine for your Subaru. So we got some OEM valve cover gaskets and spark plug tube seals in this bag. And then here we got all the seals for every single bolt on the valve cover. And we got the gaskets for the breathers that sit on top of the valve covers. And it also came with the little half moons for the cylinder head. It takes a lot more to seal an engine than you think. All right, I figured I'd stop the time lapse here just to show you guys where I'm putting silicone on this valve cover. And honestly, I just take the silicone and just run a nice bead of it all along the half moon gasket. Once you get a good bead of silicone on the half moon itself, you're just gonna set that half moon into place and you're gonna kind of rock it back and forth until it's nice and flat. We're gonna do the same thing with both of them. Best way to rock them flat is just get one finger on each end, rock the half moon back and forth until you get her nice and flat. Once you got those nice and flat, I also take a little bead of silicone Cone and just run a little bead right over the half moon and especially make sure you get the edges where the half moon meets the head. I'm gonna take some silicone and just run a bead along these cam caps. Make sure you get a good glob of it right in the corner of where the caps meet the head. And there you go, that is pretty much it. I just decided to run a full bead all along the cam caps in the front and then along this side. All of this is machine flat so you don't need silicone on there. So now that that's all good, we're gonna get the valve cover set on there. But before you get the valve cover set on, make sure that you install new seals on all your bolts for the valve covers. And these new seals literally just slide on just like that. Now that we got our new spark plug tube seals and our valve cover gaskets on, let's get this set on here. There we go, mint. Now I can get all of our bolts started by hand. The factory spec for all of the valve cover bolts is 3.6 foot pounds, but good luck finding a torque crunch that goes to 3.6 foot pounds unless you have a quarter inch one. So I'm just gonna do five foot pounds on all of them. Mint, now we got a valve cover all sealed up on the left side of the engine. So now that we got the left side of the engine done, I'm gonna get the right hand valve cover knocked out and I'm just gonna time lapse through it because it is the exact same thing as the left side. Now that we've got both valve covers sealed up, I'm gonna get all four cam seals installed. Now, before you go and just pound the cam seal in there, you're gonna rip the seal or pop the spring out of the back if you just try and slam this in dry. Take a little bit of engine oil, squirt it on your finger, and just lubricate the inside of the seal where it's gonna glide on the cam, and lubricate the outside of the seal so that it doesn't have such a rough time sliding into place. Then you can take it, slide it over the front of the cam, and then you're just gonna press it into place as much as you can with your finger 
fingers. And then once you can't go anymore with your fingers, I'm gonna show you guys how I do this without a special tool. All I do is get a little 3 8 extension and a hammer. This is just a little cheap dead blow hammer. But I'll take the extension on the seal itself and just tap it into place. Now when I install these, I always install them so they're flush with the cam cap and with the head. There we go, we got this one installed and it is nice and even all the way around. Now let's get all the other three put in. And I'm gonna replace the crank seal at the same time. Okay, we got all four cam seals and the crank seal installed. One thing I did forget to put in when we put the valve covers on was the spark plugs. These are the old spark plugs that were in the car. They do still look okay. They look like they were replaced recently. But if you guys look at the electrode on that one plug, you can see how white it is. So this thing was running super, super lean before. And I think the reason for that is the previous owner had a cold air intake on this car and it's on the factory tune. So I'm gonna get a stock intake for this thing because this is just gonna be a daily. I just wanna keep it reliable and the cool turbo noises you get from a cold air intake aren't worth blowing up an engine from it leaning out because you're pulling in too much air for the factory tune. Just a little tip for you guys. Don't think you're all hot boy with a cold air intake because it ain't gonna be so hot boy when you blow your shit up. I'm only putting one ignition coil on there because looking at the harness here, someone decided to silicone the connector onto this ignition coil. So I'm not gonna touch that because she's on there good. And if there's a broken tab on there, clearly this silicone's holding it on. So I ain't gonna fix what's not broken. So let's get the coolant crossover pipe put on, all the rear timing covers, all the timing components, and our fresh new timing belt. Before we get to putting this stuff on the engine, I bought a full Subaru OEM engine gasket kit and I thought to myself, I paid like 500 bucks for this. I wanna get my money's worth. I'm gonna use as many gaskets and seals as I can. So I went ahead on my timing cover and replaced all of the gaskets that go on the cover, this top one, the bottom one. Then I got carried away and I decided I wanted to redo all the foam seals on the back of it and oh my God, this was terrible to do. To replace every single foam seal on this thing took me like 15 to 20 minutes scraping off all the old glue and getting all the new stuff on. But they do look brand new except for one broken piece right there, but that's not really a big deal. I even replaced foam seal on the back of the tensioner bracket. But I'm done with all this stuff now. I wasted way too much time on this. As you can see, all the stuff all over the floor just from me scraping it all off. Let's get everything put on the engine. Why can't anything ever go right for me? We got more problems again. Actually, we haven't really had that many problems with this engine. That was more with the STI. But I'll show you guys what's going on. So I only got one rear timing cover on and that one was even a battle to get on. I don't think these rear timing covers that I picked up from Mica are for an EJ205 because this one didn't have the proper plug for the cam sensor. So I drilled a little hole in the rubber grommet so the cam sensor could fit through. But otherwise, it's a perfect fit. Then the right rear cover, this is the one that was on on the car and it's all broken as you guys can see all the holes are busted she fits up perfect just like that seats right against the head that I grabbed my new one which I already went and put all the foam on and spent like 20 minutes perfectly laying out all the foam on the back and that must be for an EJ20K or something with ABCS because the cam caps don't fit over this one. So that sucks, we can't even use this. So now I gotta order a right rear timing cover which isn't gonna be here for a week. But I wanna get as much as I can together on this engine right now because it actually is the next day. You guys probably notice I have a different hoodie on because I had hockey last night and then I had to work today during the day and I kinda stopped myself once I realized I didn't have that timing cover. 
whatsoever. So, what we're gonna do now is get the intake manifold on, get the exhaust manifold on, get the turbo on, get all the little things buttoned up around the engine because that rear cover is the first thing you need to put on when you put the timing components on, which kind of sucks tits, but it is what it is. This engine is 95% put together now. All I'm waiting on is that rear timing cover, then we can get all the idler pulleys on, the tensioner, the new timing belt, cam gears, all the timing covers. Then we gotta get the engine off the stand, get the clutch, flywheel, and pressure plate bolted up and replace that rear main seal. And this thing's ready to go back in the car. I could put it back in the car right now, but then I'm doing the timing belt in the car and I'd rather just do it outside of the car while the engine's out. So I'm gonna wait till that timing cover comes in. Cause we literally have everything done on this. Oh, I just wanna put it in the car. I'm so excited to finish this damn thing and start ripping it in the snow. So that's gonna be it for this one. Peace out you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys are hyped for the first start on the WRX, make sure you're leaving a thumbs up on the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.